What's up guys, Blaze again from Everyday Tactical Vids. Today I'm bringing you a review of this tactical survival shovel from 5Joy. Let's take a closer look, see what its capabilities are, see what it can do, and see if this survival shovel is worth a purchase for you. Here is the shovel with all of its extensions and add-ons. Um, just a side note that this holster right here is for the two extension poles that you'll see in a minute. And those are sold separately. So if you bought just the shovel, you would get the shovel that you see there with its um, little sheath or holster around the actual shovel head. And it comes in this carrying case here that has the end cap on it, which is another this length right here. It adds that and it has the knife and the survival saw in it that you will see in a second. Uh, so here's everything all bunched up and let's break it down. Um, put it in its different configurations and see what this thing can do. So this is the shovel in its entirety. As you can see it's about three feet long in the shaft and then probably about eight inches or so on the head. Um, so let's take off the little protective sheath for it and there is the shovel as you can see. And I will note that this side right here is the actual bladed side and this side um, is not sharpened but it is definitely uh, filed down a little bit and it's not just a dull edge um, but here's the whole thing and you can cant it 90 degrees like that you can also bring it down to there um, I don't know what that was for but maybe people with a, a real need can get a use out of that angle um, and as you can see there's little foot pegs there at the top just like on a, uh, on a normal shovel you'd use uh, for digging up dirt and things like that. One thing Tim and I were talking about is the, uh, the length of this. So obviously these two pieces here in the middle, if you can see, there's a foam coating there. And then those two knurling metal pieces and then a foam coating there. The basic shovel just comes with those two foam coatings and then those two knurling pieces in the middle are the extension pieces. So if you cut that off right here where my hand is, that's how long it would be. Um, if you just bought the basic package, then the extension is obviously this full length. Um, so there's the shovel. And if you take off the end cap here, there's this little lanyard. Take off the end cap. There's a ferro rod in the end, which is pretty neat. And then if you take off the entire um, end piece, if I can screw it back in here. If you take off the entire end piece, You get your uh, your survival knife and your survival saw in there. And there's also a little um, can or bottle opener there at the bottom. Um, so this thing fits my hand pretty well. I have very big hands, and this is a, uh, a fairly large handle. So we'll see how that feels in a little bit. I'll try to get some feather sticks going, see how this saw holds up. Um, but let's test it out now, see what it does, and see if this uh, is worth getting over some other sh shovels out there, um, and see what its advantages are and what it can be used for. Let's take some hacks at this log here and uh, see what it can do. Again, if you're looking at the face, it is the left side. Or if you're looking at it from the back, it's the right side. That is the actual bladed edge. So right there, right away, as soon as I hit it, it loosened up a little bit um, in the handle. They just unscrewed a tiny bit. Um, that could have been me just not tightening it down hard enough, um, or that could be an issue, but we'll see. We'll take a few more hacks at it. Um, that first one, it felt really solid. It felt really deep. I can get a lot of leverage here, um, and I can get some really good swings in. So let's see how it continues to hack at this. Still seems pretty tight after a few more hacks. So right there, it just rotated over on me. As soon as I hit it, uh, this one right here unscrewed a little bit and it rotated over. Um, it makes me a little nervous if it, if it just suddenly came flying off. Um, this one's loose down here as well. Um, but maybe some Loctite would help that, but then again, it'd be tough to, uh, to get it off after that. 
Uh, but let's keep getting through this thing and see what it does. It's, I'm impressed at how well it's chopping right now. Seriously, it is, uh, it's really hacking away at this log. I was a little skeptical on how well a shovel would chop, but this thing is, uh, thing is a beast so far. Yeah, it keeps coming loose down here. Um, it just won't stay tight. And maybe that's my technique. Um, but again, it, for me, it just keeps coming loose and it keeps rotating because it's so loose when I hit the log. All right, it kind of stopped coming loose a little bit as long as I put one hand down here and then one up in the middle. If I kind of really get back on it, um, then it starts to become an issue. Here's the damage report before I hack all the way through it. So you can see the uh, the work this thing is doing. And besides it coming loose every once in a while, it is really hacking away at this log. It is uh, it is taking some big chunks out of it. It's getting pretty deep and it's biting pretty well. I'm, I am really impressed at how well this has been chopping. And we're through. Let's do some digging and see how this digs. Obviously, it is a small head, um, but let's let's dig out a little bit in the ground here and see if it does its job as a shovel. I would definitely want to have boots on uh, hammering this thing into the ground instead of these sneakers. It is, it's pretty small and very sturdy and these sneakers are definitely not built for that, but just keep that in mind. I wouldn't really blame that on the shovel, that's just me being dumb for wearing sneakers out here, but obviously it's not taking out huge, ginormous pieces of earth here, but it's uh it's not very it's not very divoted. It's a pretty flat head. So you're not gonna be taking a whole lot out. And then here is one thing that you can just pull this down, bring it down to 90 degrees, and it's like a hoe almost. And you can just yank all this out of here. Alright after a uh a few seconds of digging down a little bit. As you can see, I got about, I don't know, eight inches into the ground probably, maybe a little more. And there's a lot of roots in the way. And that shovel did great at piercing those roots, getting through there and taking up the earth. But that took probably about a minute and I got about eight to 10 inches down into the ground. So you're not gonna be wanting to shovel your driveway or uh, digging out a big, man size hole with this or anything but it is it's definitely better than some one-handed shovels or uh, or some other shorter survival shovels out there that long handle has been really good it's been really good at getting down in there and really good for chopping leverage too all right here's the uh, the knife that comes inside as you can see there's a saw back on the back and then the uh, bladed edge on the other side um, it seems fairly sharp, not the sharpest ever, but definitely not super dull either. Um, so let's see how this does. We're going to do some basic carving and then maybe try to get a feather stick going. Alright, so it started to rotate a little bit um, in the wood. 
and this started to come out. I didn't know this could unscrew, um, but it did start to come out. I'm gonna unscrew it all the way just to see what it looks like. Um, and this is this must be replaceable. You must be able to buy uh, separate pieces for this, and that is nice to be able to replace it. Um, but as you can see right there, it just started to come loose a little bit. But all you gotta do is tighten it back up. It's good to go again. As you can see, this is very dry, very dead wood. But uh, this is not the uh, this is not the worst knife I've ever used out in the woods. It's obviously not a fixed blade, as you can see, it screws in. Um, but like I said, it's definitely not the worst blade I've used. Uh, it's not doing bad. It's obviously a straight blade there, so you're not going to have uh, some belly to do some some fine lines or anything like that. Um, but there is a a decent almost razor blade like point on the end there as you can see um, so there's not much left for this stick but let's just see if we can get a, uh, a little feather stick going so there's my first attempt right away obviously not the best feather stick ever but this is a very straight blade so it's gonna take some wide wide feathers um, and they're not super thick, but they're not paper thin either. I'm also not the best at feather sticking. My technique is kind of bad. Uh, Joe Flowers, if you're watching this, he saw me doing this at Blade Shell. wasn't wasn't my greatest attempt there, but uh, as you can see, it does the job. It'll do what you want. Uh, let's test out this saw back next and see how that works. Well, as you guys can see, uh, that saw is just a little too short to be doing any serious saw work. Um, but some practical applications for that would be something like a tent peg or a notch starter. Um, so let's do a little bit of that. Let's try to make a tent peg here and see how it works in that kind of application. I'll show you what I mean in a second. All right, so I made the point on one end with the, uh, the straight edge part, the bladed part. Um, and so let's try to make that notch down here as if we were making a tent peg. So we just start it. All right, see we made the little notch there, and for a ten peg, I don't know if that would be enough to uh, to fit some paracord in there or something like that, whatever you're using for cordage. But then you just take the uh, the bladed edge and you file out the uh, the wood down in there. And see now you got a nice straight notch there at the top. that and uh, and that's really what I think this saw is for um, it's tough to get started because it's so short and um, they're pretty sharp teeth honestly so it's hard to get started on the drag but like I said I don't think this is gonna be made for any big sawing applications or anything like that um, it's mainly gonna be used for uh, for things like that just small little small little applications for making uh, notches and things like that and it's really handy for that it worked well let's try out this ferro rod see how best it strikes and uh, and see if it'll light up this birch bark here. So I don't know if that notch is for the ferro rod, um, but it definitely will take some sparks off it but it is kind of difficult uh, to keep it in there since it's so small uh, so let's try up here by the handle
So what's happening here is this the the actual ferro rod keeps popping out on me. The ferro rod's definitely working really well, and it's definitely throwing some good sparks. So if you actually took time and and made a good nest to catch a spark, I think it would do that just fine. Let's wrap up here. Uh, give you some final thoughts on this survival shovel. Um, I was pretty skeptical when I first saw it. They were claiming it to be a uh, a great survival tool, a great chopper, things like that. And I'm always skeptical when I see things like that, but especially for a, uh, a shovel. Uh, but I was actually impressed how well it chopped. Uh, the little knife in there, obviously not the greatest. Not a fixed blade, not the most durable, but it cuts. Um, it did It did okay. It did what you needed to do. The ferro rod, impressed at how well it worked, but that thing kept popping out. So uh, there's a few little issues with this thing that... That honestly, you, you kind of have to expect with things like this with, with fold up shovels that can be so compact, it, it's really hard to make it the most durable thing in the world, you know. Um, but, you know, some Loctite would fix some issues like that up, some little things that can be some quick fixes. Um, so, would I bring this out on a survival outing or, or a bushcraft? No, it's not going to um, it's not gonna replace an axe or my BK9, which is my go to chopper. Um, it's not going to replace that at all. But it would be, it's definitely going to be a, a tool that goes into my truck. It stays in there. Um, and it could honestly come in, come in useful someday. You never know when you might need a shovel to get yourself out of a, uh, an unpleasant situation, you might say. Uh, but if you have a specific application for a, a demo shovel, kind of like this one, um, one that folds up, can be really small, really compact, um, I, I honestly think this is a pretty good option. One of the reasons why is the head lockup system here. So it folds down, you, you pull this down, and it rotates into those different positions. And, and that works really well, it's better than some other ones that kind of screw on or, uh, or whatever mechanism they have up there. This one's pretty good, it seems, it seems durable and locks up uh, fairly securely. The one thing is the, these kept unscrewing, you know, when I was chopping at it. Um, but like I said, Loctite could fix that up or something simple like that if you really needed it to. I would definitely recommend the, the two extensions in the middle. It is nice to have that extra length to really chop or get some, uh, get some leverage if you're digging out. In conclusion, I was surprised how well this actually functioned. Um, I've seen some shovels like this before and they're just like too short to really do anything or uh, have very specific applications. This one can do a bunch of different things. Um, it's not going to be the greatest survival tool ever. It's not going to be the one-stop shop. You'll never need another tool again. Um, but it's a it's a fun little shovel to use, and if if you have some specific uses for a a little demo shovel like this or a trenching tool, um, this is not a bad option. It has those different angles. It's got the extensions if you need it, and those little backup tools like the knife and the ferro rod in there if are, are good to have um, as backups. Definitely not as primaries, but as backups, they're good to have in there. Um, so really, it comes down to you whether or not this is a good purchase, but. I was impressed with it. It's definitely fun to use. It's definitely different than just bringing out a hatchet, an axe, or a, uh, a knife and bring out a shovel to do some chopping instead. It was it was kind of fun to use in that aspect. Um, but really intriguing. I like things like this. I'm uh, thinking outside of the box a little bit and thinking about you know what what can be practical and and what you can really use out there. So hope this review was helpful. Thanks for watching Everyday Tactical Vids. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't and hit that like button. Help us out. Um, follow us on other social media sites if you do. Uh, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.